Good morning, YouTube. Today's Kingdom song, it's a real mind bender. It also has um, defined singing parts, or at least it did in 1966 and 1984. The parts were removed in 2009 for some reason. I guess they were too embarrassing for sisters to sing since they were bold statements and not meek, frightened questions. I don't know. Anyway, I've added them back. You're welcome. This song has absolutely no breathing room. None. I'm not sure how anyone could keep up with the melody of this one without completely running out of air. In 1966, it was song number 80. It was number 146 in 1984, number 16 in 2009, and it was deleted in the 2017 songbook. Do you ever wonder why the witnesses are so amped up about the meek and lowly? Why did they encourage everyone to be meek, even though they demand that these same people learn to preach boldly and take a stand every five minutes, too? I mean, they don't ask for much, do they? It's a complete personality change on demand? Well, in case you didn't know, to be meek means to be quiet, gentle, easily imposed upon, and submissive. This is very telling. So, in 1984, the word was righteousness. In 2009, it was changed to what is right in this line. Now, I'm not sure why they made this change because it made no appreciable difference whatsoever. I do wonder, though, why anyone would need to seek meekness. I mean, I get seeking righteousness because in our highly nuanced world, there can be a fine line sometimes. Jehovah's Witnesses don't understand nuance, though, so makes this whole thing a bit suspect. But anyway, why would anyone seek meekness? I mean, think about it. Why would anyone want to try to be easily imposed upon? Thus it may be in the day of his anger that you may be hidden away. Of course, that's why. The message here is that if you're 100% compliant and submissive and allow the Watchtower Society, who speaks for Jehovah, obviously, to impose upon your life at its convenience, you may be hidden away from the day of Jehovah's anger, which is supposedly going to happen any minute now. These people are so afraid of their deity. If he were so loving and kind as they try to paint him, then would there really be such an emphasis on the need to fear him? Because fear and gentleness don't go together, guys. This is abuse. This is especially bad in the context of the patriarchal Jehovah's Witness culture. I mean, this song here is basically condoning random temper tantrums by the men in charge and goes right along with their heinous advice to domestic violence victims to be meek and submissive until their abuser has a change of heart, which will happen approximately on the 5th of never. We all know this. Y'all, the thing is, Jehovah is the ultimate abusive husband. I mean, just look what he's doing to the congregation here. I'm going to get really angry, and I'm going to throw a hissy fit like an angry toddler with a dirty diaper. But if you kiss my butt enough, maybe I won't hurt you this time. Flee to God's kingdom, the hope of mankind. What are we fleeing from? Seriously, what could be worse than what was just presented to us in the first verse? Fight for his rule, take your stand. Take your stand. Okay, so let me get this straight. We're supposed to be utterly submissive and meek, but also take a firm stand for his rule? How? And, and why is this even necessary? I mean, if he is ruling, then who are we taking a stand against? There you will find God's protection. And again, if you obey, then you will be protected and blessed. And if you don't obey in all things, in every single minute detail, then you'll pay with your family, your friends, and ultimately your life. Seems a little harsh, doesn't it? 
And wh what are we being protected from exactly? Well, Jehovah's impending temper tantrum, of course. So we are effectively begging, groveling for protection from the one threatening to kill us. This is not how this is supposed to work, guys. Come you who hunger for truth and for justice. Why longer sorrow and cry out in pain? Okay, I'm just going to ignore this hideous wording for a minute. No, no, I'm not. Why longer sorrow? What does that even mean? I think they were going for something along the lines of why sorrow any longer, but that doesn't even make sense because there are plenty of causes for sorrow, if not more, once you become a Jehovah's Witness. It's not like the second you get baptized, all your problems disappear. <laughs> it's actually quite the opposite in my experience. People who hunger for truth and justice are typically the ones who leave the Watchtower. Many of us do leave crying out in pain and sorrow because of lost love, lost family, lost relationships. And then there's that second layer of sorrow and mental anguish when we realize that we've been lied to for years and the world is absolutely nothing like we were taught. And we have to mourn our lost potential and our missed opportunities while at the same time relearning how to cope with life and confront our own mortality for the first time. Then we have to figure out how to make friends and have healthy relationships, which is not easy at all when you're trying to learn childhood level lessons as an adult. It gets harder the older you get, trust me. And another thing, this line also points out how Jehovah's Witnesses view worldly or non-Jehovah's Witness people. They basically think that all worldly people are either A, wicked, evil people who lie, cheat, and steal all the time and deserve to die at Armageddon immediately, or B, weeping, crying, pitiful, sad, meek victims of the people just described who are just suffering and waiting for the Jehovah's Witnesses to come along and hand them a Watchtower magazine. This is ludicrous. Seek now God's way to escape the oppressor. Submitting yourself to Christ's reign. Oppressor? What oppressor? Where? I, look, if someone is legitimately being oppressed, say by an authoritarian regime or something, is becoming a Jehovah's Witness really going to make things better? Or is it likely to actually make the situation worse? And what do they mean by submitting yourself to Christ's reign? Well, it's the same answer as always. Submit to the watchtower because the watchtower is God. The watchtower is Christ, unless they screw up, in which case they're just imperfect humans. Flee to God's kingdom, the hope of mankind. Run away! Run away! Fight for Israel, take your stand. Take your stand. They just told us to run away and take a stand at the same time. How, how the hell are we supposed to... There you will find God's protection and blessing. Hasten to heed His command. His command. Hurry up. Hurry up. Heed his command right now. I want you to run and take a stand at the same time. Do it. Do it now. This is a blessing, you miserable slaves. Look up, yes, lift up your heads with rejoicing. See all the proof that the kingdom is here. Really, I have yet to see a single shred of proof. Although I guess if you're looking up at the sky... You can't look at the increasing news coverage about the witnesses, none of which is positive. Y'all, I was shocked after I left the witnesses and started reading about them. Shocked at what I didn't know about when I was in and what I would never have known had I remained a Jehovah's Witness. This is really disingenuous. They're like cheap used car salesmen or something. See all the proof that this is a great Buick? See? All the proof right here. I've got tons of proof. This is the best proof in the world that the Buick is the best car ever. See how honest and upright I am? I showed you all this proof. What? What? 
N no, you can't look at my secret papers. That would be apostasy. Just trust me. After all, I've shown you all this proof. Welcome the light that Jehovah is sending, and let him alone be your fear. This is so crazy, y'all. Only be afraid of the one who's supposed to save you? Oh, what the hell? And, and even worse, the one who's supposed to save you from himself? How about he just stops killing everyone? I mean, wouldn't that actually solve the problem? I mean, he is the problem. Flee from the kingdom how fast as you can. Brainwashing is very bad, super bad. Your children deserve protection and blessing. Freedom is totally rad, very rad.